Yes, sir. Hi, I'd like some breakfast. We stopped serving breakfast. I know you stopped serving breakfast, Rick. Sheila told me you stopped serving breakfast. Why am I calling you by your first names? I don't even know who you are. I still call my boss Mr. I worked for him for seven and a half years, but I walk in here all of a sudden, total stranger, and I'm calling you Rick and Sheila like we're in some kind of AA meeting. I don't want to be your buddy, Rick. I just want a little breakfast. Well, you can call me Mr. Enough is enough! I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane! Everybody strap in! I'm about to open some fucking windows. We got shots fired. It sounded like an automatic firearm. Puffy coverage, shots fired. We have an active shooter. We have an active shooter inside the warehouse. Welcome back to episode number 31 of Shots Fired. Had a little extra audio I had to play there. Episode 31. Can you believe it? No, I thought this was going to be like 29, 28 something. It's no, been, we did that already. Yeah. You know, there for a while, there was no violence. There yep. was no active shooters. There was no terrorism. There was nothing. No. And then the Democratic presidential debate happened. The first, the, the beginning of the presidential election cycle started. And then suddenly all kinds of shit happened. Yeah, I think we're up to five shootings now. Yeah. Started with the, the California... Um, Garlic. garlic festival yeah, yeah and then uh and then we went to uh, uh texas and ohio yeah. and, and uh here we are talking about texas again yeah over the weekend labor day weekend uh, did you uh have anybody thank you for your service over labor day weekend no no, <laughs> no i can't say i have no <laughs> some people are stupid enough to do that you know that oh yeah no I'm- it happens uh, nothing surprises me anymore at this point. So over Labor Day weekend, nobody knows about this shooting in Texas. It, it because yeah. everybody's been watching the fucking Weather Channel. Yeah, and the Weather Channel never talks about active shooters. No, they talk about drive-by hurricanes and stuff like that, but there's never any talk about active shooters. So nobody knows that this shooting happened in Texas because everybody's been watching Hurricane Dorian scrub the Bahamas off the map. Yeah, I just saw. A- satellite image and they showed before and after and it's like before it was bahamas after there's this island underwater it's basically an underwater beach full of wrecked cars yeah i mean it sucks that place is like literally fucking gone yeah yeah it's uh i, I feel bad for the for the bohemians uh matter of fact we will probably do something tactical shit we'll do something once we have more intel out of that area we'll do something to raise some money and send some gear and support that way yeah. But uh, while everybody was watching the Weather Channel, uh, you know, we had this we had the shooting in Texas. I originally thought when I first heard it, they were rehashing El Paso because I'm talking about a shooting in Walmart. And I'm like, right. uh, in Odessa, info? you know, right, Odessa. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's right about in that, that same area, Midland, Midland, yeah. Texas. Yeah. Um, so this dude goes to work and gets fired. Yep. And. Can anybody tell us what movie we played the uh, the origin the first clip uh, before the podcast Magazine. music the first clip video audio clip Can anybody tell us what movie that was Huh Go ahead and tell us in the comments It was actually Falling Down because Falling Down is a classic If you haven't seen Falling Down Haze Yourself Go watch Falling Down uh, It's about a guy that just couldn't fucking take it anymore And evidently this guy in Texas there was he couldn't take it anymore Yeah. Um, he gets fired from his job and at, at an oil refinery or oil fields or something like that. And uh, his his work calls 911, and he calls 911 too. Yeah. So they both call 911 to complain about one another, uh, but not to really make any accusations of threats or violence or anything like that. And then this dude leaves there before the police show up from the 911 call. And uh, – while he's, you know, after he leaves, he calls the FBI tip hotline. and uh, Just weird. Yeah. And, and, and they said he didn't make any threats on the tip hotline. He was just, ran, he, was, he was basically being very random and talking about atrocities uh, waged against him. Right. That, that's still that whole thing, like, it's just, no, nobody fucking does that. Well, crazy people do. True. Because True. crazy people. Are crazy, yeah. Right. That's, you got that. Point. So, so this guy, uh, Aton or Atar or whatever the fuck his name is, they uh, he he makes the call to the FBI, and then 
15 minutes later, supposedly unrelated, he gets pulled over by Texas State Patrol for failure to use his blinker. Those dudes, I, those guys don't fuck around. I've been down there busted for, busted for speeding a few times by those guys. They don't, they don't fuck around down there. So they pull this guy over for failure to use his blinker. This is this is as basic of a basic traffic stop ever. Right? Yeah. And this is one thing they taught us in the police academy is there's no such thing as a as a routine traffic stop. You never know when the shit's going to hit the fan. You don't know what you're pulling over. Yeah. And so this particular trooper or two troopers, I believe, in the car, uh, they're pulling this guy over because he failed to use a signal. And he immediately engages them with an AR-style assault rifle, according to the media, uh, through the back window of his car. Um, uh, one one article I, I read said that it uh, that they uh, they shot the he shot the deputy through the rearview mirror. So I don't know if that means he was like shooting over his shoulder and looking through the mirror and sighting it like fucking Annie Oakley. I don't know. I'd probably, I probably I don't think that's what happened. I doubt it. Right. <laughs> hey, hey, speaking of I doubt it, right? Um, we're going to talk about that in a minute. We have an update on the I doubt it case. Oh, Jesus Christ. We do. We, we do. The where They're where out. are they now update on the I doubt it case. But anyway, so this guy engages with an AR-style rifle through the back window of his vehicle and strikes the patrol trooper mm. uh, or two. I'm not sure that whether there were one or two in the car. Uh, and then takes off. You know, so now it would be a pursuit, but I guess he disabled essentially that trooper. So that trooper was not pursuing. And so this guy then decided he just snaps. Yeah. He, what do he do next? From what I understand, again, like you said, there's not all that much information. He just kind of went crazy and fucking started shooting shit up. Was hey. it a movie theater? I, I heard something about a movie theater. Then it was a Walmart. Well, no. Okay. So he, he drives off. And just start smoking people at random on the yeah. highway. He shot a truck driver three times, through one, uh, th- twice through the door, or once through the window. Killed him on the spot. Uh, shot, uh, yeah, uh, killed seven people. It wounded twenty five. And that seven is not including his own death because he met his end when the police finally caught up with him yep. uh, after he carjacked a uh, uh, a uh, postal truck. A uh, female Hispanic postal worker, uh, and he went postal on her. He killed her, took her postal truck. I guess his truck was disabled by something. Yeah. And then, of course, as we get with every one of these shootings, now the dispatcher is telling everybody that there's two shooters. There's a gold sedan and there's a mail truck. They didn't realize that he had ditched yeah. the gold sedan, jacked a mail truck, and was now shooting people uh, from the mail truck. One guy was shot when reportedly he heard gunfire outside, so he went outside. I mean, I get that if you also have a firearm and are going to engage the target, but, like, to just, you know, be the nosy neighbor and, oh, I heard they're shooting outside and then step out, like, I mean, not the wisest choice. Typically, if I hear that someone's outside shooting, I'm either going to stay inside and take care of my family or grab a gun and join in the fun. Right. But uh, yeah, so this this definitely wasn't fun for anybody. Uh, uh-huh. There was basically he was uh, just driving around shooting people. How do you defend against that? You know, we talk about active shooters in movie theaters, at schools. We talk about active shooters at the mall. We talk about sports venues, um, public places, basically where you might have your CCW and you might be able to engage. Yeah. But you're in traffic, and the guy. Five or six cars behind you on the highway is smoking motherfuckers. Are you, you're not even going to hear that gun. Man, there's somewhere. I mean, everybody likes to game everything and prepare for every scenario. There's some scenarios where you're just fucked. I mean, if it's your time, it's your time. And if some dude in traffic behind you starts opening fire, there's only so much. you. I mean, what are you going to start saying? Oh, you got to stay vigilant and don't let yourself get locked into traffic. I agree. Driving down the road like this. Lane splitting should be legal. <laughs> Fucking search and assess. As you're <laughs> search and assess as you're driving. I get nervous when people pull up next to me on the highway. You know, like when they're passing speed mm-hmm. and then suddenly they slow. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll hit the brakes and drop back behind them a little bit because you never know when it's going to be some sort of ambush. Yeah. Here in St. Louis, that shit happens all the time. They'll no, whip in that, front of you, yeah. jam on their brakes. 
want you to hit them so that you can pull over and exchange information. In other words, you can give them all the shit you have at gunpoint. Yep. Um, but yeah, so there's very little tactically to talk about with this shooter. This guy. No. Uh, the, the big news, though. Is uh, and the reason why the media is really not, I mean, they're talking about it, but not like they normally would. And their usual screaming and crying for immediate confiscation and blah 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 isn't happening. It's like, oh yeah, and why not? Why not, Alex? Because apparently the guy's like a hardcore uh, uh, Bernie Sanders fan. Oh yeah, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, he's a Bernie Sanders supporter. Yep. And he had very little social media, so there was there was he was not a social media guy, so yep. this is, he was not the kind of guy that's going to get red flagged on Facebook. Okay, no. Uh, however, he was essentially red flagged by his neighbors uh, because they said he was fucking nuts. Uh, matter of fact, the Hispanic neighbors next to him. They said when they heard the report, they actually saw the report on Facebook of the shooter driving around shooting people, the gold sedan. And his next door neighbor looked at her husband and said, uh, it's probably El Loco. And that's the name that they gave this guy, El Loco. Oh, right? Because That's bad when, like, you hear about a rant. Oh, yep, it's this guy. And you're I mean, right. That's, that's fucking bad. That means that this guy really was that fucked in the head. Head. Yeah, but here's the best part. This is the reason the media is really not harping on it. He couldn't legally own a firearm. Oh wow! And he got denied recently on a 4473. His background check worked, and he wasn't able to buy a firearm. Well, then how did he get one, TJ? Because there's no way that the law he can't have one. Nobody seems to know, Alex. Wow. He just criminally acquired a firearm. Wait, are you saying? Criminals do things criminally? Criminals do things criminally, especially the acquisition of a firearm when you're already a criminal and you can't own one. You mean like they tell you when you get out of prison, hey, dumb fuck, you're a felon, by the way, you can't go buy guns? Yeah. Weird. Yeah. So this guy actually, everything worked here. All the gun laws worked. Yeah. But there's still seven dead, 25 wounded. So you're saying that laws don't stop bad people that just... Bad people do bad things because yeah. they're bad people, and the moral laws on top of it only hurt. The only thing people? that stopped this guy was the bullet that took him out. Yeah. Right? So one the, of the same way it's been every fucking time. The only thing that stops a bad guy with the gun is not a red flag, is not a background check, is not your <laughs> no firearms allowed. This sign. guy literally called the FBI on himself. Yeah. I mean, He's like, hey. FBI, I'm calling you on my mobile phone, which you could easily ping and find my location, and I'm fucking nuts. Yes. And I'm talking nuts to you. And I just got fired, and I'm angry and ranting to the FBI randomly. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Look at the past, I don't know, 30 years history with the FBI. Not exactly like the most fucking solid group of dudes there. No, they keep letting me buy guns. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Red flag. So, does anybody know why we played the second movie clip before the podcast started? Because it's a fucking spectacular movie. Um, well, how's it go? <laughs> I've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. So, what do you guys think we're doing there? Okay, so you, you've got falling down, which represents the shooter in Texas. But who are the snakes on the motherfucking plane? That's some deep shit. Yeah, it's Congress. They're the snakes. They're the snakes on the motherfucking plane, and we they need are. to open some windows. Because Badly. they're going to they're using this shooting. It's already been all over the media all day. They're not talking about the shooter, how he's a Bernie Sanders supporter, how he got how he couldn't buy a gun, how how background checks worked. They just want to talk about the scary black rifle, the, yeah, it's the assault gunfall. rifle, and how we uh, how they they believe that Trump is on their side. And that they're going to be enacting legislation come September. Whoop, whoop, shit. September's here. It's the third. Yep. This month, they're going to be introducing bills, which the Dems are saying Trump will back. And, and I have, those bills are red flag laws. Those bills are God knows what else. I'll admit this is the boldest I've seen them about. You know, before they'd always try to say, we're not coming for your guns. We just want what what is it? smart gun control is what they'd always say. Um. 
for anyone who's not paying attention or not worried about it this time, or, ah, they always say this and nothing happens, blah, 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 blah. This is the first time they've blatantly said, we're fucking taking your shit. Beto O'Rourke just came out yesterday and said that if he's elected president, the government, you will have no choice, but the government will take and buy back your AR and AK type weapons, that you will no longer get to have them, that they're going to buy them back. Which the irony of that is meaning you buy a gun. The government then tells you you no longer can have what you legally possess and that they'll buy it back from you. They're forcing you and confiscating your own personal property. Then they're going to pay you with tax money that you paid them in the first place. I hope they pay full MSRP. I doubt it. (laughs) So, I mean, basically, they're double fucking you. They not only want to take your firearms, but then they're going to pay you back with your own fucking money that you gave the fucking criminals in the first place. And so So, this this is a guy that's that's running for president that's an Irish-Mexican? Uh, strangely enough, uh, from Texas. Yeah, Irish Mexican from Texas. Yeah, Beto O'Rourke, uh, a.k.a. the actual name is Robert Francis O'Rourke. He was the one he narrowly, narrowly missed winning in uh, Texas for, I don't know, I think governor. I was quite butthurt about that, but now he's, I don't know how he's looking in the standings. Last I heard, the only realistic uh, candidates for the Democratic Party right now are, uh, um, Creepy Uncle Joe and uh, oh, whatever that fucking crazy chick's name is. Fucking Pocahontas. Oh, Cortez? No, 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 no. Oh. She's not running for president. God, that'd be funny. She's not even old enough. <laughs> um, oh, the old lady. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the one that uh, they claim to be Indian and she's not. Yeah, they're all so dumb I try to shut that, like, out of my brain because right. it hurts. Right. But those are the, as of right now, last I heard, the only two legitimate-looking candidates. But I know Beto's coming up somewhat quicker. Bernie Sanders is apparently out, like, again, because he's just old and batshit fucking crazy. Even even after he did a video with the female rapper? Huh. Oh, what's, what's her name? The I don't know. <laughs> Have you seen the fucking video? If, we can, if Dixon, if you can do wizard magic and edit this clip, magazine um video into the video (laughs) have you seen the video of bernie sanders at one of those like punching bag things no and he fucking does this most pathetic like i've never hit anything in my life swings and hits it and it fucking shoots away and it comes back and fucking clocks him in the dome (laughs) this is is a real deal yes it is the greatest thing ever just knocks him in his fucking face and then he gets mad and swings at it again and misses completely i'm really surprised that that he'd be out after doing the video with cardi b oh i mean cardi b is obviously a spokesperson for most of pop culture you know she's, she's got like 40 million people follow her on instagram and she's back in bernie so i thought you know maybe you'd have a shot 40 million of those uh, fucking 38 million is Indian dudes sending her messages of show me bobs and vagines. <laughs> Let's be honest here. The other half is normal dudes sending messages saying show me boobs and vagines. Right. Well, not us. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I, it's already out there. She was right. a stripper. There's yeah. already plenty of plenty of videos of her naked. Not that impressed. I think she. they, they said that she was going to teach Bernie how to drug people before he took their money. Yeah, she's actually experienced at doing that. Very, from what her own admittance. So we got this Texas shooting, and then uh, you know at the same time we got Hurricane Dorian going on. Yeah. And for the first time ever, this is the Tactical Shit Shots Fired podcast. You know, and we're, it's a radio show, right? Yeah. So we should have traffic and weather. I mean, we could. Yeah. yeah. So right for the first time ever, we've got a correspondent in harm's way. Reporting on Hurricane Dorian, let's take it out to my twin brother, Sig Glockenkult. Sig, how's it going out there? Hey, shitheads! Sig Glockenkult here, and I'm coming to you live only 1,100 miles from Hurricane Dorian's outer bands. Shit's getting crazy. This storm, they say it's one of the biggest ever, has been parked over the Bahamas for 48 hours. 150 miles! Bohemians are flying by! It's just crazy out here! 
Back to you in the studio, TJ and Alex. Was that just token Marcus? I don't think so. I think that was a bohemian flying by. Okay, I was going to say, I, I thought I, I think was token Marcus is black. The bohemians yeah. aren't black. They're bohemian. Okay. It's okay. like Dominicans, bohemians. Yeah. They're, the one, they're the ones who have that Rhapsody. Yeah, well, actually, I guess Hurricane Dorian could be called the Bohemian Rhapsody now. Could it not? Wow. They say, you know, she just, it was headed towards Florida, and it did not look good, and then mysteriously disappeared. The only thing people are wondering is, what did she have on Hillary? Right, right. There was emails contained. Dorian knew too much about story. Hillary? Yeah. And that's why, so th- this hurricane stops over over the uh, Bahamas comes to a zero it, it just stops yeah 225 mile an hour wind gusts sustained 150 mile an hour winds beat the island to death for 48 hours and then this thing instantly just like blows itself up turns into a cat two and heads straight north yeah right like i mean it was it was on a direct collision course in florida and then it just gets put off yeah i mean they were saying it was gonna literally fucking smack over florida and then shoot up the east coast through like uh georgia and the carolinas and then just no. I've got a theory. I've got a theory. And I've actually got video. Oh, God. Yeah. What really happened was tactical shitheads in Florida engaged the hurricane with high volume of gunfire from the East Coast beaches. And it it bugged out and went home. Here, watch. That was literally video from Knob Creek. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I've been addicted to the hurricane, right? And I've been watching, you know, basically the Weather Channel nonstop. We're watching the Twitter feed. Is I that, just, I just love hurricanes. Is that I, what old people do? It is. I love, I love the 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 destruction. I love watching the meteorologists try to. Pretend they know where this thing's going or it's what it's doing. It's a fucking storm. Like, I get that there's patterns and weather patterns and, like, fucking cool fronts and shit and science behind it. But, like, in the end, it still is a fucking tropical storm. Like, it's it's weather. I get a kick out of all the great ideas that people have. You know, like, Trump wanted to nuke it. I'm not sure how that's a good idea. Uh, Florida man wanted to have the Navy <laughs> dump ice on the, you know, <laughs> like copious amounts hero. of ice. And then fighter jets fly the opposite direction of the storm right. to distract it and send it a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Those aren't the best. The best, if you look at the Twitter feed for this thing and you read them, you, oh, it, it's, it's weaponized autism, right? I mean, <clears throat> there are all kinds of people in there blaming Trump. It's all Trump's fault. The hurricane's Trump's fault. Oh, my God, Trump's playing golf. What a Like, fuck. I know he likes to liken himself to godlike status sometimes, but, I mean, let's not, like, add to that by saying that he's so powerful he he controls the weather. Well, my favorite is that the Russians did it, right? That the Russians have satellites that can laser heat the water, right? Big fucking lasers. Like hurricanes are cats, basically. You got a fucking satellite with a laser beam, and you basically heat the water with the laser beam, and you could steer the fucking hurricane right into the Bahamas, just like a cat right into a couch leg, right? And they, and they, target, they target poor people because, of course— we want to wipe that island clean and start over. Let's build a Trump Tower and a Mar a Lago, whatever the fuck it's called. Let's build that yeah. all there. And it's obviously Trump and the Russians that are doing this. They created this hurricane. And the Russians benefit. They make them sound like they, they get timeshares. Oh, ooh, okay, okay. Get time might be on, God damn, it might be on to something now. Are people really that fucking stupid? It, it, yes! Yes! It's fucking hysterical. You have to do it. Just go read the, the latest feed in Twitter about the hurricane. I'm scared now. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. Let's let's talk about uh, where are they now. Yeah, yeah. You so you get info on a, oh, our, our friends Johnny Miller. The dumpster defenders. And his son Michael. Yep, the dumpster defenders. They have been released. <laughs> Crusaders of couches. <laughs> they have been released. It was a mattress. Oh, yeah. They've been released 
twice now. Okay, so they were originally released on $10,000 bond until the video went viral. Then they were rearrested, and they were then given a $100,000 bond, no 10%, meaning that they had to come up with a hundred k. They knew they made a bunch of money on yeah. the YouTube video. I guess. I mean, how does that happen in America? Uh, you know, you get arrested, you get bonded out, and then they're like, oh, this is a big case. We're, we're going to rearrest you and you. give you a new bond. Well, anyway, so they posted finally a $100,000 bond uh, each, each. Uh, back on April 30th. And uh, Dad's trial was supposed to be in August, although we did hear that they pushed that trial back. There was a continuation. And the son's trial should be coming up here in, like, September. Chances are, though, um, chances are they'll push that back again. But right now, they are using self-defense as their, uh, you know, uh, hey, I, I'm with them. I'm with them. We saw the bat. That motherfucker threw the baseball bat when 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 little Johnny started slinging buckshot. I still think that was like a little two by four. It was a fucking bat. I slowed it down and show it to you. I'll show it to you again. But anyway, if we got nothing out of this, it was the wonderful phrase. I, I doubt, doubt it. it. That, that. So if anybody uh, if anybody else knows any uh, these facts motherfuckers or details, can't afford shirts, let alone a hundred thousand dollar bail. Somehow they came up with it. Somehow they came up with it. They probably got sponsored by Mattress Direct. Oh, what's not? Even, that's a whole other radio show we could do on about that the money funny. laundering that Mattress Direct is. Oh, I'm I'm convinced that's that's. Has anybody ever seen theory. a customer in a Mattress Direct store? But yet there's more Mattress Directs than there are Walgreens. Yeah, I mean, how does how does that stay open? I've gone in before and literally been so creeped out by the fact that no one's there. <laughs> That I've left. Like, that's got to be the easiest job in the world. Hey, want to sit in a mattress store that no one goes to for 12 hours a day surrounded by pillows and mattresses? Fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> well, shit. What else do we have to talk about before we go? Chicago. What happened in Chicago this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how it's a record or above average numbers, but uh, apparently it was a higher than normal level of violence in Chicago over the weekend. It was like... 37 shootings and five people dead. I'm sure that went up overnight. but Seven fatally shot oh, and yep, 34 see. wounded in Chicago during Labor Day. Um, and then the next article says eight dead, 37 shootings. Yeah. So, to me, that looks like a pretty fucking normal weekend in Chicago. Yeah. And what's funny is, I mean, I get any, any loss of life is, well, most any loss of life is tragic. And... These th something has to be done about these shootings, in my opinion. More people carrying guns, but I mean, this shit happens in Chicago literally on a weekend basis, and no one gives two fucks. The media doesn't care if a black man kills seven other black men. No, I mean, you want to know the real racism in it's, the U.S.? It's the media. It's it's not an active shooter. No, if it's just a drive by. It doesn't matter if little kids are being killed or, you know. And there, a few weeks ago in St. Louis, little fucking three-year-olds shot in the face in a drive-by. I mean, this shit happens on a regular basis and nobody gives two fucks because it's expected. It's, I mean, what everybody's guilty of it. You hear about it and you're like, oh, where was that? Oh, North St. Louis. Well, oh, one of, the, oh, one of those shit. killed this weekend in Chicago was 15-year-old Devontae Jackson. His name makes yeah. him not news. Yeah. Devontae Jackson was killed steps from his home. He was planning on starting high school Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, and these are these are literally little fucking kids going to step out of their house to go play with their friend or go to the park. But it's not news because it wasn't an active shooter. It wasn't they can't blame the gun. Because no. they know on that one, it's just going to be blamed on gang violence. So Chicago PD added 1,000 extra patrol officers uh, during the three-day holiday weekend, which was down uh, from an extra 1,400 last year. And uh, the violence is up. Last year, they had 27 shot. This this year, uh, 37 shot, which still doesn't beat the 2017 Labor Day record of 42 shot in Chicago. So in three Labor Days, let's add that up, 27, 37, right? 27, 37, 50, 64, 64 plus 42. 387. 100, <laughs> 106. 
106 people have been shot in Chicago over the last three Labor Day weekends. Yeah, that's I'm pretty sure it wouldn't. If we looked at Labor Day in Baghdad or Ramadi, probably not going to get those numbers. I don't think they celebrate that there. You don't think so? No. They have like Goat Day. No, they don't really. They're really past Ramadan. There's not. It's a just lot Ramadan's of it, huh? And soccer. Do like, they shoot each other during Ramadan, or is that like a no shooting? No, time? that's pretty quiet, except for in the evenings when it's like timeout, and then uh, when they win any soccer game ever, it is not a pleasant time to be there, at all, <laughs> at all. <laughs> Fuck that. Oh, we won. Let's go celebrate by firing every AK we own into the fucking air. <laughs> okay. I gotta get a new AK built. My, yeah, I, I kind of fucked mine up. I, I took that Saberworks um, Center T official uh, AK operator course. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I welded my AK-74 shut. This is why we can't have nice things. It was a grueling class. Mentally challenging, physically challenging. Oh, well, this whole AK is so much better than AR. One course and the AK shits the bed. Yeah. No, it ran fine in the course. But then I guess it was. I put it away hot. And then it was in the back of my truck in, in the rifle case on the way home, and I get, and it rained. So I guess hot gun gets wet in the rain, and literally I, I ruined a pair of Altama OTBs trying to fucking uh, mortar the bolt carrier. <clears throat> I, took the, I, I took the dust cover off, took the spring off, and I literally jumped on it twice. Both times the bolt, the bolt ca- uh, charging handle went through my Altamas. Right. Oh no shit. Threw my Altamas and didn't budge. I ended up having to get a heavy hammer, like a small sledge, and beat that fucking thing out of there. The the piston was literally burnt, like welded together the inside of the uh the inside of the uh, what do you call the thing the piston goes in? Oh, I don't know. Piston hole? Yeah. The piston vagina on the AK. You fucking AK stuff. So. Yeah. So But anyway, I'm actually getting a new AK built, hopefully in time for Red October. Red October um, Ostfront is the match coming up the last weekend of October 2019. Lots of good matches in October. Oh, this yeah. Year. Yeah. The Red October in Utah, I think, is the first weekend of October. I think so. And then the last weekend is Red October Ostfront, which is Eastern Front in Russian. And that's at uh, Sparta, uh, World Shooting Complex. I uh, happened to have won that last year. Probably won't this year, though, because Corinne Mosier is coming back. Yeah, you're gonna get your ass kicked. Yeah, Corinne won the year before, 2017. I took second. So, and there's there's tons of other good competition. I'm just f- busting. I'm fluffing my own fucking feathers here. But uh, so Red October is uh, uh, coming up. The event is on the Facebook page, and then the following Sunday, that's a Saturday. The following Sunday is what they call NATO Retaliation, which is the same course of fire, the same match, the same stages, but shot uh, in a retaliatory. Uh, way with AR-15s and other NATO weapons, like SCARs and stuff like that. Semis. And so the guys that compete on uh, Red October actually are competing as a whole with the guys that are shooting NATO retaliation. And if you shoot both days, like I'm planning on, then you can actually shoot in the double agent class and, you know, because you go both ways. Oh, shit. All right, so Ostfront, make sure to sign up for that. If you got an AK... Monster Match is coming up, too. Yeah. Monster Match is going to be at Bentrest again. Correct. Uh, sponsored again by Tactical Shit. Tactical Shit is proud to sponsor all these matches in the Midwest uh, that get people out and get people get lots and lots of trigger time. Yes. Monster Match is by far the most trigger time of any match of the year. Yeah. All part times. Um, you can't – you can literally not shoot all the targets on every stage. I, I – I don't know if I think there's only been a few times that anyone has ever actually cleared an entire stage in time. Yeah, I, I've never seen it, but no. I'm going to try this year because I'm shooting that Turan Tactical MPX, the uh, John Wick gun. Yeah, yeah. May the Wick be with you. Yes. Aren't you going to Tehran? To- I was supposed to go to Terrans to uh, to shoot their little course of fire yeah. and to hang out with the girls and stuff, and that got delayed. There's actually a little bit of drama going on out there. Yeah. Um, you know Jade? Of course. Jade, get this. I'm breaking this news right here. This is. We're going to call this segment Tactical TMZ. 
Right, we've done tactical we TMZ have, before. We need to bring that back. That was yeah. actually pretty fucking well, good. Well, welcome to the segment of tactical TMZ. This is coming from, I mean, some of you might know if you follow these guys on Instagram. I thought it was a joke, but it's no joke. Jade Struck, Terran's angel, Jade Struck. Yes. Has now dating Rudy Reyes. They are a thing. Uh, they're talking about moving in together. Um, That's your props, Rudy. Yeah. Props. Yeah. Way to go, Rudy. Love you, buddy. Um, she shakes her head, though. Doesn't matter. <laughs> she doesn't matter. You like that Sinead O'Connor look? No, no. I, I didn't even know who that was. I had to look that up at one point. People kept talking about, oh, yeah, that's Sinead O'Connor. I'm like, who the fuck is that? She's Still not sure what she's bald done. Bald head hoe from the 80s. The 80s was fucking yeah. weird in general. But anyway, so Jade Struck is dating Rudy Reyes, and uh, so that's why you're seeing a little less of her. Uh, at the Terran Tactical Facility, she's still there. She's still shooting, but she's uh, she's out doing her own thing. And you know, uh, she's 21 years old. I wish her the best. I just uh, you know, that's that's some interesting uh, some interesting Hollywood news in the shooting community right there. So anyway, we'll see how many people actually listen to the whole fucking thing yeah. to know and comment about Jade Struck dating Rudy Reyes. Um, we forgot to talk about one thing we came in to talk about though. Oh shit, Wally World. Oh, yeah, fuck. Completely let that slip. Yeah, so in response to all this, fucking wonderful Wally World solution is... Walmart. Once they said, I believe, all all orders are filled and everything, they will no longer be selling handgun ammunition and then specifically named short barrel rifle ammunition. Short-barreled rifle ammunition. Uh, which they then named... Uh, two two three or five five six so get it while you can because in the next couple weeks you will see no and in alaska they're not going to be selling handguns anymore so yeah which in alaska they do it's a big deal because you know a lot of guys carry that on bears bears moose Mm -hmm. other alaska there's so many active shootings in alaska that walmart wants to do something to, to to save people from that villainy yeah so, get it while you can. In the next few weeks, uh, say bye bye to handgun and five five six two two three ammo, which yeah. leaves handgun old... and short barreled rifle ammunition. Basically, only the fuds in their thirty out six. Yield the thirty thirty and forty five seventy ammo. That, yeah. That's going to be about so it. No handgun. No two two three. No five five six. Not even the Lord's caliber. Forty five ACP. <laughs> I'm told that's what the interwebs calls it now, and the 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 memes. You know why I shoot nine millimeter? Two Gulf Wars. That's why. Oh sweet Jesus! I'm the new FUD. The FUDs of the next generation. <laughs> so anyway, Walmart is going to stop selling you ammunition, and uh, because of that, tactical shit is going to step up and say, "Okay, Walmart, you had a twenty percent market share of ammunition sales, and you decide you don't want it anymore because." You're being like a social justice warrior. That's fine. You do that. Tactical shit is going to increase our ammunition supplies and capabilities immediately. Yep. Like hopefully by the time you see this podcast or hear this podcast, tactical shit working with our distributors is going to basically be offering a full line of handgun and short barreled rifle the ammunition. Scary ammos. All the with scary the pointy ammo. ends. All the scary ammos with the pointy ends and the yes. FMJs and the hollow points and all the fun stuff. Yes. Not just the cool shit we have now. But anyway, you've heard it here. This is Shots Fired Podcast, episode 31, coming out right after Labor Day weekend. And uh, hopefully we don't have to do another one of these this week, but you never know. We'll we'll stay, stay glued to the news, and if something else happens that we feel that you need to listen to us rant about, we'll fucking do it. Closer to election day, the more of these we're going to be doing, I'm sure. Yeah, buddy. We'll see you guys on episode 32, whatever the fuck it happens. 